Turning around, he shrugged his shoulders. Well, well, I'm not waiting out here any longer, Jenny said. My sister is freezing and I'm starting to feel cold, so I'm going in. There's probably no one there anyways. With that, she moved past Trevor and turned the handle. It opened. Trevor had expected it to be locked. So when it opened and Jenny moved inside, he stood there looking into the dark interior. Here, Jen, Jack called. A flashlight might help. Jenny emerged for a moment to grab the flashlight. Wait, when, she... when did they get a flashlight? Why have they not been using it? It's nighttime, isn't it? <laughs> when she grabbed it from Jack, he held on to it for a moment longer and gave a grin as he let go. Oh, Someone's like Jack. got a crush. Funny how we went in two different directions there. <laughs> You've heard the term, ah, there we go. Here it is. You've heard the term player, right? That's a good way to describe Jack. Unfortunately, he had the looks to back it up with, and most of the girls did actually have a crush on him. I hate this guy. The <laughs> I hate that you wrote him. The group had just come to live with his constant flirting with any female that moved, and occasionally an inanimate... And occasionally an an... an inanimate. <laughs> inanimate object. Can we establish how horrifying that is? I was really scared I was gonna say flirting with any female that moved and occasionally ones that didn't. Oh! Moving on. Continue. Let's hope Jack gets better. <laughs> Wait, did you write that? No, no, no. Oh, no, no. I thought that was so <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, seeing Jenny, turned the flashlight on. Finally stepping inside cautiously, looking around, he saw nothing that caught his eye. Across from them was a plain wall. Not even a picture hung on it. To the left was a fireplace, and to the right, he saw a table with a vase of fake flowers on it. Suddenly, right as Sam and Teddy entered at the back of the group, the door they came through shut. Okay. They all looked back. The door was coated with metal on the inside, and, they oh. were, and there were no handles. But not only the door was coated in metal, so was the entire wall it was attached to. There were rows of holes all across it, and before Trevor had a chance to imagine what they were for, sharp metal spikes emerged from them blocking any last hope of egress. Then slowly, the spikes started moving towards them, forcing them towards the empty back wall. Nice use of egress. Uh, we're going to be imp imposed, <laughs> Penny screeched. I believe you mean impaled, Carrie corrected. Not the time, Carrie, Trevor said. Then Trevor heard a thud behind him and looked back to see a large portion of the back wall had opened up like an old castle drawbridge and was now a ramp down to the ground outside the back of the cabin. Quick, he said, <laughs> and everyone followed him down the ramp out behind the cabin. The spikes continued to move until they came within a millimeter of the back wall and then stopped. The group stood on the ground. Okay, so the back wall turned into a slide and now they're, they're now out of the cabin. They're now outside behind the cabin. What an ineffective death trap. We'll see. Then he looked at his feet. There had obviously been snow here, but now it was all plowed away, leaving dirt and gravel. Flanking them on either side was a very large wall, topped with spikes and razor wire. Behind the wall was thick forest trees, keeping the wall out of view from the road. Up ahead, there was an open space that was almost a path, leading past tents and booths. Wait, where are they? I don't know. Most of them were clearly- Oh, oh past tents, <clears throat> not past tents. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you read it, and I was like, Past tense. So it, it used to lead? It doesn't but anymore? It used to lead? Them to, <laughs> what is it now? <laughs> Most of them were clearly there only for the atmosphere. Someone had gone to great lengths to make the whole place look like an old-fashioned carnival. You wanna be Timmy? I get the feeling he doesn't talk much and I don't have a voice for him. What is this place? There we go. <laughs> Love it. He said he whispered, but I don't think my voice has the capability to whisper. Suddenly, low-toned circus music began to play. <laughs> What's that from? It's the, it's the ice bear in Crash Bash. Tiny wins. Do some carnival music quietly for me. It's <laughs> <laughs> not even the carnival theme. I don't know what the carnival theme is. You could do the clown one. <laughs> but I'm gonna try to make it creepy. Low tones and creepy. Then a deep, sinister, yet cheery voice blasted from unspeen, unspeen, unseen speakers. Welcome to my carnival! Penny gasped. The voice seemed to come from everywhere at once. Those four words were all Trevor needed to hear to know that the person saying them was not of sound mind, and that this was no ordinary carnival. The voice continued. Deep, sinister, very cheery voice. <laughs> deep, sinister, and very cheery! Once upon a long time ago, my name was Jeb. Does that sound like a carnival guy? Yeah, it does. But that was before. Now you can call me Ringmaster, or simply Master if you prefer. The voice was gruff, but giddy in the most man uh, ma ma maniacal way. And it ended with a deep throated cackle that was almost more of a cough. A chill went. <laughs> 
cock. Yeah, it was kind of a cock. <laughs> I think he actually cocked you, though. I think there's something wrong with him. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. <laughs> a chill went down Trevor's back. Actually, Carrie interjected, you should have said you may call me ringmaster, not you can. Trevor threw a warning glance at Carrie, but the psycho didn't make any acknowledgement of the comment at all and continued. Look around! You should feel lucky! This whole amusement park just for you! However, today we will only have time for three of the attractions. These three are specially adapted by yours truly, for the purpose of me getting to know you a little bit better. Ha 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 ha! Do your laugh. Much better. Again, he ended with a chilling cackle. His speech and intonation was strange pausing at moments in the middle of his thoughts. Is intonation a word? Yeah, but it's not used correctly. Oh. This whole amusement park just for you. Oh, <laughs> so random. the pauses. However, we today we will only have time for three of the attacks. There it is. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Um, go ahead, folks. Step right up. I think my voice has really changed from, from when it started out as in that guy. It's not bad. It, 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 it would be interesting if that's what his character did. Like, his voice is actually super nerdy like Trevor's, but he tries He's to make it, it cooler. They took the first few steps forward into the park. Is there an escape route? There's not. Since when are they in a park? Fences. You missed all of the explaining. There are fences, I missed, razor I... wire, tents. They can only go forwards. Uh... Uncertainly, they took the first few steps forward into the park. There was nowhere else to go. The path didn't go very far before a large sign blocked the path, directing off to the left. Glancing that direction, Trevor saw a merry-go-round, or at least what looked at first glance to be one. Starting off with a spin, we have the scary go round. Ugh. Uh, come up with that all by yourself, did ya? Carrie sneered. This time he acknowledged, yes, Carrie, I did. <laughs> I kind of expected him to be a recorded voice. Carrie was visibly taken aback. She opened her mouth to speak and then shut it again. Don't be shocked. I was simply listening to your conversation as you walked to my cabin. Just so we wouldn't have to go through the rigmarole of introductions, we can skip straight to the first name basis. Isn't it lovely? And he got really British all of a sudden. Carrie remained silent. The group took a few steps closer to the scary go round. By the way, this guy's an idiot because he, he, he totally got rid of like all of his mystique by saying, oh, I was listening in, this is how I knew your name. I'm definitely not this omniscient force who knows all about you. Up close, it could be better called a contraption. Just like a normal merry-go-round, it was a large circular platform with a pole in the middle and a canopy overhead, all in rotation counterclockwise. The difference was, in place of the cute little horses and giraffes to sit on, there was an assortment of drooping chains, rotating saws, and dangerous mechanics. Some traveling the same direction, some going the opposite. I would call that a scary go -round. All moving faster than normal. Most of the group took an involuntary step back. Ah, what's wrong? Something happened to your little pony seats? Okay, uh, now why does it sound like he swallowed a cigarette? Stop criticizing my voice. Ah, ah, what's wrong? Something happened to your little pony seats? All right, I did that. Here's what you've got to do, jump on! Then the psycho assumed a robotic sound and noted, Caution, the rotating death trap is spinning faster than it appears. Again, he laughed loudly at his normal voice back, he added. <laughs> Once on, the objective is simple. Find in the concealed button that sits on one of the... <clears throat> seats. No one moved. Why would we play your games? Jack demanded defiantly. Because! came the loud reply. You don't have a choice. Silence. Still, no one moved. I have a fun-filled evening plan for the lot of you, my little subjects. So here's the deal. If you cooperate and make it to the end of all of that I have planned, then I'll have a back door waiting for you to lead through. There was a pause. Then everyone looked again at the ride. Oh, and a side note. You should think of these rides as, content as a contest. The better you do, the better... It will be for you. This time, the laugh was a cough, and it sounded all the more chilling to Trevor. <laughs> Jack turned to Trevor. We don't all have to go on it, T. Let's just make it you and me. No way, Jenny protested. Flattered that you gentlemen would take a saw blade for us girls, but I'm far more agile than you two put together, and I put and I plan to find that button. Fine by me, Trevor said, despite Jack's skeptical look. The more eyes, the better, I suppose. Just be careful. I'd rather no one take a saw blade tonight. 
The rest of the group watched as the three turned to, towards the ride. Then Timmy bravely squared his shoulders and followed. I'll help too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll help too. There's Timmy. <laughs> he said matter-of-factly. No way! Jack and Trevor both said at the same time. Sit this one out, bud. It's too dangerous. Bud. Jimmy? Read the line. In whose voice? Jimmy. Who's Jimmy? I don't know. <laughs> Who's Jimmy? Obviously I meant Timmy. That was so confusing for a minute. That's weird. What are you doing? Go. I'm not weak. Timmy said defiantly. I'm just small, which will aid me in this case. I'm coming. In this case? Okay. In this, in this case. Oh, in this case. It'll, it'll, it'll case. aid me in this case. Gotcha. But I said it's like a lawyer. It'll aid me in this case. Then he walked past the three and jumped onto the rotating surfaces as graceful as a cat before Jack could protest again. Ah, be careful, Jen! With that, the three jumped on one by one. The scary go round was not laid out in an organized fashion. The floor was broken into different rings that traveled in different directions around the circle. That's tough. Various hazards were set also traveling in various hazards were set also traveling in no certain pattern around the circle. But there was a clear safe zone marked on the very edge of the circle. It was indeed traveling faster than any of them had expected. Jack had lost his balance upon first landing and lay on his side, recovering. Trevor and Jenny had assumed the button was hidden closer to the center than the outside, and were slowly making their way that direction. The circle I'm was- I'm so confused as to what's happening. What do you mean? Well, in my mind, all of the like dangerous stuff is hanging from the canopy, and the canopy is spinning, but the platform is staying not in motion. Am I wrong? Yeah. Well, what's I mean, no, happening? no, what do you mean? That's What's wrong with that? Well, usually it's the platform that's spinning and the canopy is staying still. You're right. So it's opposite now? No. So the canopy is spinning? No. It's not spinning? No, yes. It's not spinning. But the platform's spinning, yeah. but everything is attached to the canopy. No, everything's attached to the ceiling below the canopy. Which is not spinning? Which is spinning. So the platform and the, and the ceiling are spinning. There's a floor and there's a ceiling, they aren't spinning. There's a floor and there's a ceiling and they are spinning. So this is the boat and this is the gate. <laughs> the circle was not only moving faster, but was also much bigger than they had thought. Timmy was out of sight, but Trevor had too much to watch out for to be looking very hard. Wait, how did- He sidestepped awkwardly, narrowly avoiding a circular saw blade with blood stains that passed inches from his torso. He wondered whose blood it was. He ducked. <laughs> it's Jenny's. She just, she's just dead over there. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whose blood that- oh. He ducked as a loop of chain passed overhead, almost catching his neck. Straightening up, he saw a very large sphere of solid metal suspended and swinging from a chain. He was too slow to avoid this obstacle and it slammed into his forehead, knocking him to the floor unconscious. And then I have asterisk, a bunch of stars. Asterisk, asterisk. I call them stars because it's cuter. That show the passage of time, which is a great place There's to, a passage end, of time? to end episode one. This is episode one? I thought this was gonna be like three episodes. We've gotten past six pages, so this six might out of be- Six twenty-five? Thank you for listening to the first part of the story. We're gonna see, let's see. Uh, let's, let's end each part with questions. Will Trevor be okay? Who do you think will die first? Is the voice the Joker? Find out next time on-, on Coffee break. <laughs> There's no uh, coffee Clearly you weren't drinking. It was just, it was empty cup. <laughs> See y'all next time. Yeah, yeah.